When Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 was first announced, no one expected it to be as good as it ended up being. Coming out of the first game, everyone had lukewarm to low expectations and no one thought this second game would last. But it did. I'm still playing it to this day, so it's time to give credit where credit is due. These are 10 things that Dragon Ball Xenoverse did right. Number 10. Everyone gets a transformation. You get a transformation and you get a transformation. So in the first Xenoverse, only Saiyans got a transformation. Only they could turn Super Saiyan and sort of enhance their own abilities. I kind of felt like I was missing out unless I was playing a Saiyan, you know? Now everyone has a transformation and they're very different from one another. You get a different bonus depending on the race you're playing as, which brings more depth to the combat. In Xenoverse 2, you can play your favorite race and not feel like you're missing out, and that was great. And number 9, the Time Rift side missions. The transformations in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 are tied to these Time Rift missions. So, in the new hub world, there are these floating islands called Time Rifts. You can go to any of them, but your race has a specific time rift that is tailored to you. Side quests pop up in these different time rifts, but the one for your race unlocks your transformation. So instead of it being like the first Dragon Ball Xenoverse, where the transformations were like a mission drop, or they were an item that you bought from a vendor, here they are a quest reward. At the end of a long line of quests, it feels so much better getting that transformation finally. As a member of the Frieza race, I had to overcome Frieza and become the leader of the Frieza army in order to get that transformation. That's an epic quest line, that's something I'll remember for the rest of my life. It's not just something that I bought on a random vendor around the corner. Here's the golden transformation, sir. Thank you very much. Speaking of the hub, at number 8, it's way bigger and it's way better. The first Xenoverse hub wasn't that fun to explore. You could only run around the place, there were loading screens all over that hub, it, and just not a lot to do in general. Xenoverse's 2 hub is a huge improvement. First of all, they let you fly, which makes the exploration a lot more fun. There are dynamic events happening, like Krillin is giving a lesson, or Yamcha is giving a lesson. Sure, those get old over time, but it feels like stuff is happening in that world instead of it just being stale like the first one was. And removed from those dynamic events, there's just a lot more to do without any loading screens. Well, not so many at least. And number seven, the mentor system has been improved. It's way easier to find the mentor that you wanted to find. After they spawn for the first time, they stay in that location. You know where they are instead of it being like the first Xenoverse, where you just had to reload the world and pray that the mentor that you want had spawned in the right location. Where the hell are you, Piccolo? I found Piccolo, finally. He's not never in the same place. And this time around, that relationship meter or affinity level or whatever the hell that was, it was super confusing. That's, that's just gone. It's way easier to understand the mentor system. It's way easier to let them train you and teach you their signature moves. Instead of, I don't know, Having to go on parallel quests or story missions with them as your mentor, so, so they like you more to teach you whatever the hell signature move bullshit they have. Oh, it's a way better system this time around. And number six, more customization options. It wouldn't be a Xenoverse game if you couldn't create your own character. And this time around, they have more character creation options like new facial features, new haircuts, new voices. Also, you can start with a pretty unique character already. Then you get into the game and you've got even more outfits to choose from. Not only outfits, but obviously also a lot more skills are available. This brings more complexity to the meta because there are a lot more options in the skills and the loadouts that you can bring to the battle. But it also helps in building a more unique character, a character that stands out as your own because there are more customization options. So a win for longevity and meta changing and combat system and a win for unique characters. And number five, they fixed the parallel quests. In the first Xenoverse, all the parallel quests had a hidden objective, an optional objective. And if you did that objective, you would get something called ultimate finish. You needed to get ultimate finish if you wanted to get the best items. Now in the first Xenoverse, the problem was sometimes you did that optional objective, but for random reasons, the ultimate finish wouldn't pop up. So you had to repeat the quest until it popped. This made grinding parallel quests in the first Xenoverse game just infuriating because there was this random element that you just couldn't count on ever. Even if you did everything right, it just didn't pop at the end. So you were screwed, you had to repeat the whole thing, start over from the beginning. Now in Xenoverse 2, they finally fixed it. It's still grinding, but it's not as infuriating as it was because it's what you expect it to be. If you do the optional objective, you get the ultimate finish, you get a chance to get the extra items. Now, 
you can also get angry because the items didn't drop, but that's an expectation you have going into the parallel quest. It's not as infuriating, and I actually have more fun than I should grinding those items. And number four, the expert missions. Now, the expert missions are not as good as I thought they would be, but they are still a nice change of pace from the regular parallel quests. So initially, expert missions, they were sold to me by the developers themselves at Gamescom 2016. It's sort of the equivalent of raids in an MMO. Six players, party up, go defeat this huge boss with different mechanics, and they do have some distinct mechanics, but they're kind of simple to understand, which doesn't add a lot of longevity, and it's not like the execution is too hard to perform on those. It gives you a lot of room to fail the mechanics, so it's not exactly the raid that I was expecting, it's kind of a parallel quest in hard mode with more players, which is still good though. It gives you something else to do when you're tired of doing parallel quests, they're a nice change of pace, and if you have a larger group of enemies, now you have something to do other than just organizing a random tournament, I guess. And number three, the events keep happening over time. The developers are keeping the game updated as time goes. Now these events can be many things. They can be expert missions, they can be unique challenges, and but they all give you some unique rewards, which gives you an incentive to come back to the game regularly over time. And again, it gives you something else to do other than just grinding parallel quests and expert missions. Of course, if you're into fighting other players, that's all the end game you're gonna need. But, these are more options, and more options are always a good thing. And speaking of more options, at number 2, the whole circle button is now fully customizable. The circle button is, of course, the thing you press for key blasts. The one ability that everyone in the, in the Dragon Ball universe has in common. Besides, punching and kicking, of course. And even that became customizable with Xenoverse 2. You can have a Key Blast Barrage, you can have a slow moving but a Key Blast that tracks your enemy, you can have a Key Blast that paralyzes your opponent instead of damaging him. All in all, it's another option added to an already extended array of options that makes the game even more complex, even more unique. You can customize your character to your liking even more. And finally, at number one, we're gonna talk about options a bit more, this time in terms of basic combat moves. We don't have time to go over all the little changes they've made to the basic combat system, but several improvements were made, like the way knockbacks work now and the way you can follow up to them with vanishes. There are multiple ways to charge your enemy now, including a way that makes you dash into the enemy's back. There are guard breaks like there were in the first game, but now there are stamina breaks as well. The combos have completely changed, uh, the combinations between the square and triangle buttons. They're all lovely changes, really. They, they all changed for the better, and those were the top 10 things that Xenoverse 2 did right. There are, of course, downsides, and maybe that's something that we'll talk about in a future video, but for now, what I would love to know is uh, if we have any Xenoverse 2 players on this channel. Are you guys still playing Xenoverse 2, or maybe thinking of jumping back into it? Because my videos are just that good. Let me know about all that in the comments below, I'd love to know if we've got that type of audience. Also, if you love anime as much as I do, click that like button. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel, and if you feel like watching the 10 best Dragon Ball games of all time, click right there. If you're in the mood for something else, click right there. But as always, my name's Globku, thank you very much for watching, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!